My name is John Seaman, and on behalf of the families of TWA Flight 800 Association, I'd like to welcome you all tonight. I'd like to thank you for coming to share this day and evening with us. And uh, I appreciate that everybody braved these difficult times to get together tonight. For tonight's for tonight's program, I'd like to introduce uh, a dear friend of mine who I never knew 25 years ago, but someone who came to us in the aftermath of the crash and offered his assistant and that of all his colleagues and joined with the Family Association to plan and build this memorial. And for 19 years, he and his colleagues have been maintaining it. And I think, I think everyone I've spoken to today says it looks pretty darn good. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. It's been obviously a difficult year and a half that we've been through. Um, it's hard to believe it's been 25 years. Um, and really, we became involved with the Family Association 23 years ago, and it's truly been an honor to be a part of not only assisting the families uh, to help get the memorial built, but also to commit to maintaining the memorial uh, in perpetuity for the families and their loved ones that were on the plane that night. Um, a, lot of, a lot of you have come to me and thanked me of how wonderful the memorial looks, and I wish I could take credit for it, but if you guys can peek your heads out, <laughs> these are the two that really do all of the work, Vladimir and Marsha. So they're the ones that, that you guys, if you get a chance to, to thank them for how wonderful the gardens look. So we have a, a, a quick program. Uh, the memorial's been a, a labor of love for a lot of people, and it's been a collaboration between not only the families and IGHL, uh, but also Suffolk County, who's been supporting the families for the last 25 years. And I'd like to introduce the presiding officer of the Suffolk County Legislature, uh, Mr. Rob Colaco, who's been a, a strong supporter of the memorial for many years. Thank you, Clank, and I want to welcome everyone to Smith Point Beach, and, and I want to thank our uh, first mention, our, our Acting Police Commissioner Sue Cameron is here with us today, as well as our Parks Commissioner Jason Smagan, and thank them for all the work that they do for our community. Um, and I want to thank all of you for being here today. Um, 25 years ago, um, a man that I just met this evening, who many of you uh, probably have known throughout the years, and the importance of the um, first responders in any emergency is invaluable. Um, but I would like to take the opportunity to introduce a former commissioner of emergency management who responded that evening. Uh, was one of the first on the scenes, um, Mr. David Fischler. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening on behalf of the first responders of this county our uh, fire, EMS, police, and Coast Guard, who that night came out and responded to an emergency that we've never seen in this country before. Uh, it's, Frank said at that night, 25 years ago, I was the Commissioner of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services for Suffolk County, and I wore the hat as emergency manager for the county. It would be, as we all know, the unthinkable occurred. Uh, our county professional volunteers and professional career first responders stood up to the challenges that night. An event like this has never occurred in the United States at that point. And we needed to do the right things. What Thank you, David. 
Someone else I've had the pleasure of meeting for the first time uh, this evening who's been part of the investigation on what happened that evening, uh, has since been retired from the NTSB, but Mr. Peter Gulls was there also. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here on this somber day of remembrance. And uh, as I look at this most beautiful memorial, my thoughts return to the service we once held here just a few weeks, maybe two weeks after the accident. And it was on a night very much like, like tonight. And uh, leading up to, this, to that event, I remember talking to a couple of county fellas and saying, I need a place for you know, a non-denominational service of remembrance. The, the families need this. And he said, I've got the perfect spot for you, Smith Point Park. There couldn't be a more beautiful site in the county. And he drove me out here, and we, you know, it, it, and I took a look at it, and I said, this is spectacular. And this is where the service was. If you remember, Father Judge assisted in the service. And it was a, it was a wrenching night. But I must say, it was the perfect spot. And in the end, what, what a beautiful memorial it is. And extraordinary credit goes to you, the families, to the counties, to the private uh, partners who have put this together and will keep it going in perpetuity. It is a lasting memorial and it's one we can all return to over the years and take some real pride that, that we we're part of putting this together. Uh, I wanted to mention a couple of people who are not going to be with us this year. Uh, one of them is my former colleague, Bob Francis, who unfortunately passed uh, a couple of months ago. He was vice chairman of the NTSB. He was uh, a colleague of mine. He was an advocate for the families. And uh, there was no investigation that was more important to him uh, than this one. He was an honest public servant, and uh, I'm sorry he's gone. Uh, the second individual, of course, is Jim Kalstrom, who died just uh, a, you know, a short while ago, whose service uh, was yesterday. Now, the NTSB and the FBI didn't always get along. You know, that's the way things are when two agencies have joint responsibilities. But he was here from the first moments. He was a force of nature. Uh, and he was a good and decent man. And here with us tonight is, is his colleague, Ken Maxwell, who was on the floor of, of the hangar, who worked tirelessly with us. And I, I appreciate seeing him, and uh, I know many of you know him. He, was a good, he is a good man. And then finally, let me mention Father Judge, uh, who I know that you have honored with a uh, a memorial bench here. He was an extraordinary human being. You know, a uh, monk, uh, chaplain to the firefighters. Uh, he was he was there in the worst of times, and uh, the emergency response community of New York City knew him and loved him. And when, when, when people were most in pain, Father Judge was there. And uh, that he was with us during those weeks. I remember seeing him in the beginning circulating among the families in his, in his Franciscan robes. And I said, who is this guy? And then I got to know him. And what an extraordinary human being he was. And uh, uh, he was... Uh, he was just someone that, that, that you should never uh, forget. And finally, let, let me know, I know it's hard to see that anything positive could ever possibly come from a terrible tragedy such as this that you've gone through. But, but let me just say one thing, that the worldwide blueprint for how families are treated was written here with your tears and with your support. Families across the world 
will never have to face some of the challenges and problems that, that you had to face. And the world is different because of that. Thank you, Frank, and uh, welcome everybody, and thank you for having me this evening. I'd just like to say a few words about this beautiful memorial and uh, what it takes to keep it looking like this. And it's a perfect example of a wonderful public-private partnership that can keep it going, hopefully, in perpetuity. And it starts with Don and Eleanor and the Family Association and all of the money that they've raised over the years and they entrusted IGHL to oversee the foundation to make sure that all the money that comes in uh, to the Family Association goes right to this memorial. 25 years ago, on the evening of July 17, 1996, as the setting summer sun began to silhouette the Manhattan skyline, Trans World Airlines Flight 800 departed from JFK International Airport on a non-stop flight to Paris, France. Twelve minutes into the flight, at 8.31 p.m., as the Boeing 747 jumbo jetliner soared easily past the South Shore beaches of Long Island at 400 miles an hour, a catastrophic tragedy overtook the 230 passengers and crew. As the plane climbed past an altitude of 13,000 feet, a fatal explosion of controversial origin occurred in the vicinity of the center fuel tank, rupturing the fuselage and setting the plane afire. For brief moments, the doomed airliner continued in flight into the now darkening eastern sky. Then, in what onlookers would describe as a sudden fireball, the shining craft suffered a final explosion, shattering into a rain of flames and falling into the sea below. There were no survivors. Daniel Cullen, Daniel Cullis, Richard Campbell, Paulo Ann Carbon, Joseph von Hendrik III, Jacques Bernard Caro, Jenny Caro, Ludwig Chanson, Constant Bert Chabonnier, Jacques Chabonnier. And worked with the vast majority of the flight attendants that were on the aircraft. Christine, Susan, Yorio Bailey, Deborah Collins, Delucio, Warren Dodge, Guy DuPont, Deirdre Marie Feeney, Kathleen Veronica Feeney, Mohammed Samir Farah, Charles Roderick Foster, Deidre Henry Coulomb, Carol A. Fry, Daniel Kirk Gabor. My sister Jody was on the plane with um, 20 other from our town of Montoursville, Pennsylvania. Salvatore Mazzola, Pamela McPherson, Sandra J. Mead, TWA flight attendant, Amy Seekerman Miller, Kyle C. Miller, Jid Miller, Joan W. Miller, Robert P. Miller, Elizabeth S. Miller, Angela Jean Murta, Alicia Carlos Nelson, Twyla Jewel Nelson, Cheryl Lynn Nybert, Margaret Giuliano, formerly of TWA, I worked on the investigation and came to know many of the families. I'm here on behalf of some of the crew members who have no one else here tonight and some of the families that were overseas. Rosario Rolando Perez, Judy E. Penzen, Marion Percy, Dennis George Price, and Peggy Normel Price. Josette Thierry, Mauro Tofani, Melinda D. Torch, Larissa Michelle Eusippus, Lois Rose Van Epp, Rick Lee Verhaeg, Lonnie Warren, Jacqueline Alexis Watson, Jill Victoria Watson, Thomas 
Ralph Weatherby the third. Oh, you're coming out? She's coming out now, so... 